Number 14, complete each of the following equations. And then we have this nuclear reaction. So we have CM, I have no idea what element that is, but we're just gonna keep rolling through, right? It's got an atomic mass of 250 with an atomic number of 96. And this, since it has, I mean, a really, really high atomic number, it's got a high mass. This is relatively unstable, it's radioactive. So it's just going to basically, you know, fizz out into three different components, three individual pieces to the pie. Now, in this case, we have to find out what this is, but it breaks down into a strontium, SR strontium, with an atomic number of 38 and a mass of 96. And then you have a neutron here, but you got four of them. So anytime that you have a coefficient in the front, that's how many of these particles you have. But the question here is we got to find out what this is. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this and I'm going to put in my nuclide notation. So I want to find out who is the atom or the subatomic particle that's behind this little piece of the puzzle here. We also need to know what the top number is going to be as well as the bottom number. Now, how do we do this? Well, we treat the yield sign and let me get out of the white. Let's do, yeah, there we go. We treat the yield sign as a equal sign where all of the top numbers on the left have to equal the sum of all the top numbers on the right. And then all the bottom numbers on the left have to equal all the bottom collective numbers on the right. So we just do it in parts, right? We work one step at a time. Let's work with our top numbers first. So for the top, I'm starting off with a 250. There's nothing else on this side. So that means that whatever, you know, is on this side, it all has to equal to 250. So 250 equals this mass number, which I don't know what it is. So I'm just going to label it as X. And it's literally being added. There's an addition sign here added to that 98. So 98 is coming. So we'll say X plus 98. And now I have to add my one for my neutron. However, I have four of them. So what would I have to do? I would have to do four. Yeah, you got it. Four times one. So anytime that you have a coefficient in front, you got to multiply that number. So four times one on the top. And then once we do the bottom numbers, we got to multiply the four times the zero, but that's a zero. So we'll say 98 plus four times one is four. And let's get to it, right? 250 equals the X value plus 98 plus four is 102. So if we just keep solving, I'll subtract 102 from both sides. Let's see what we get here. Minus 102. This goes bye-bye. And let's see, if I do subtract, let's see, I do two, I don't know, two, two minus one is one. Five minus zero is five. Zero minus two is a negative two. So 150 minus two is a one, 150 minus two, right? 150 minus two is 148. So we're gonna change that to a 148. Any way that you do subtraction is fine with me. I'm just going to add these two numbers just to make sure that I did the math properly, but eight and two is a zero. That's a one, that's a five, and there you go. So we have an X value of 148. All right, so we got 148 for the top. Cool. All right, so 148. Now we're going to do the same thing with the bottom numbers. So maybe I'll put the bottom over here. Okay, so we're going to start off with a 96 on the left side. Nothing else on the left side, so it's got to equal everything to 96. So 96 equals. We're trying to solve for this, so that's our x value. And then plus, there's a 36 on the bottom here. 36, I mean 38. So 38 plus 38. And then plus four times zero is zero. So you could just, you know, get rid of that. And now all you gotta do is that subtraction again, minus 38 from both sides. 
So this is going to cancel out. And 36 minus 96 minus 38. So we have 9 minus 6 is 9 minus 3 is 6. 6, six minus 8 is a negative 2. So that's 60 minus 2. So that's 58. And well, I guess I'll put it over here. X equals 58. And I'll just add these two just to make sure that um, we did it right. 8 and 8 is a 6. 5, that's, yep, so there we go. And that's the number on the bottom. Fifty-eight. And now the question is, who is this atom, right? Well, always know that the bottom number is always going to lead you to the atom name because the bottom number is always the atomic number. And just know that the atomic number is the unique number that doesn't change um, for any element, right? So if you change an atomic number, you're going to change the atom. So the question is, we got to go on the periodic table and, and realize where 58 is. Now, when I look on this periodic table, right, I see that it does increase by atomic number. I just got to find out where 58 is. But silly me, right? I see that here we have to jump down from 57 to 71. This atom is in the F block, which silly me, that was my mistake. I accidentally didn't put the F block on the uh, the the screen here, but if you do have a periodic table, F block is that little skinny two row, uh, you know, block at the bottom of this, and you just got to find out where number fifty eight is. And number fifty eight is C E. It's cerium, so you'll see where number fifty eight is. It should be C E, and that is the answer to this question. So we have a C E atom. Uh, number 58 on the bottom and 148 up on top, and that's it. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're almost at 50,000 subs, which is absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for helping us out, and, you know, this channel is what you guys make it, so um, thank you so much for all your support thus far. We have memberships to the channel if you want to help us out a little bit more. Uh, there's four tiers, so maybe there's a tier that might suit your fancy. Uh, so go check it out. Not mandatory, obviously, not obligated, but any little help helps us, which in turn helps you guys out because we can produce more videos. So thank you, and I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right, have a great day. Bye-bye.